So we were discussing about some of the architectures that are used to bias a transistor using constant current sources. We delved into some of the architectures in fair amount of detail, and some of them I gave you an intuition, and I'll give some of the for the analysis purposes. I'll I'll will get those in one of the problem sets. You can you can do the analysis. Uh, the uh, as I mentioned earlier, the analysis is should be quite simple because there is only one equation to satisfy, right? So, uh, but the but the key thing to note is, given a specification, how do you come up with an architecture? So that is what. I would like to focus more in, in this course. And, and the next part is uh, answering as to, uh, so let's say I we have bias a transistor using constant current source. So what is so holy about it? What is so good about it, right? So ultimately we understand the fact that everything is dependent on the current. So if we fix the current source, then things which are dependent on the current will not change, so on and so forth. But uh, it's time to get more specific uh, into, into the reasons and the effects constant current biases have on our designs, okay? So, so let's say I have a transistor which is biased with a constant current. For example, let's take any one of the architectures. The simplest of them is this. So we know that the transconductance or GM of this transistor is mu n C ox W over L, Times the overdrive. Okay, this can also be written in this form, right? So I, uh, what I'll do, I'll express it in this form. Times two. Uh, Right. So this can be expressed in this form of, I mean, this is ID. So I'll write in this form IDS, two IDS by VTS minus VTHN. Right. Similarly, I can express GM also in another form, which is two mu n C ox W by over L times ID. Right. I didn't, I mean, are you replace ID with the ID equation, then you will see that everything falls back to this term. So all three highlighted expressions are valid. If they are pointing to the, to the, uh, uh, to the same expression for GM, but written in another way. So even though all of them have the same mother equation or mother form, the, the question sometimes that confuses people not that it should confuse you, but in general, sometimes it should confuse us people is, if I look at this equation, it seems like, uh, it seems like uh, this GM is not dependent on social voltage. But if I look at this equation, it seems like the GM is dependent on social voltage. Or if I look at one of the, if I look at the bottom equation, it seems like the GM is independent of overdrive, it's independent of VGS. Right, but the top equation seems like the GM is dependent on VGS. So what is what is it? I mean, what is the fallacy in that argument? Pardon? ID is dependent on VGS, right? So, but again, if I get to specific things, if I say that if I look at this this equation, if I look look at this equation, and I see that. Uh, I mean, so the question that uh, one might ask is, okay, so when should I use one of these equations, right? Ultimately, it boils down to that. Ideally, I should be able to use any of these equations and get the same GM. But is there a preference of usage under conditions for which I'll be using one of these equations? Yes. Yeah, right. So if you have, if you have designed your circuit, in such a way that it's biased using a constant current source, then we know that ID will not change, right? Then the bottom equation makes more sense, right? But if you have used it using a constant voltage source, right? You have, you have let's say, biased your transistor using something like this. Where the VGS is constant, right? Then 
necessarily you prefer the top equation, right? So again, all of these equations are valid as long as you know which part of the equation is changing and which part which part is not changing. And for example, I can still use I can still use this equation when the circuit is biased like this. But I have to recognize the fact that ID is also dependent on DTS. Right? I have to recognize the fact that ID is still dependent on this applied VB. Okay. So you for example, again, if for example, I start off a design and find that for some quiescent, I find that this ID is equal to one milliamp. Right? That has and I then change BB, the ID is going to change. Right? But in that case, if I stick to the old value of CM that I have calculated, that will be wrong. Do you, you get that differentiation between the two, two cases? Okay, so let me emphasize it further. So let me I use I have some, I have designed a circuit using this type of okay. I did my calculation, I found the GM. Okay. So then I found the GM, I found the ID. Then for some other case, let's say PB change. Okay. PB change by 100 millivolt or 200 millivolt, I don't know some value. Then I have to do all the cross in analysis again. For that, I use GM. But I use the same old thing because I got the same from the analysis. So that would be incorrect. Because the ID will have changed if there are changes. Right? But let's say the current one, such the bias is different from the proposal and the top. So then it's not a problem because current is I can still use this old equation. Right? So I think all the equations are valid, but you have to know under what condition you have to use this one to make your life simpler. Because if ID, if, it, if, if your circuit is not biased using a constant current source, then as you start using the equation at the bottom, nothing is wrong, it's a bit valid, but you have to take into account that when you read to a calculation, ID will not be different. You have to plug in the new value of ID. But if you are using, if the circuit is biased like this, and you see the top equation, then it's fine. Because automatically, the PV changes, this is captured in the DM equation. Okay, so again, the point is all the equations are valid, but you need to know as a designer, right, which variables are constant and which variables are not are changing. Because I mean, typically when we do our analysis, we assume that things on the right hand side of the equations are all uh, functions of independent variables, on the left hand side are functions of dependent variables. But in a circuit, those things can get jumbled up because everything is dependent on everything. Right? So it's better to find out if the, the, the design aspect of it will, will give you the understanding of which is independent, which is dependent. And from there, you use the appropriate equation to like make life simple. Okay. Any questions? So this might look very trivial, but trust me, a lot of mistakes are made because things are not understood well in this regard. Okay. So this also, these equations also give you an important, uh, important um, insight, and the insight is as follows. So let's say I have biased a circuit using constant current bias, right? The circuit on the top, and the threshold voltage changed. Okay, and the threshold voltage changed. Do you think the GM is going to change? Yes or no? Why not? Yeah, essentially you see that constant current bias here and there is independent of the voltage. Right? So your DM is not going to change. But if the circuit is biased in the one on the bottom, then the voltage is changed. You think DM is going to change? Yeah, it is going to change, right? Because the corresponding equation that I am looking at is the, is the top equation. So now that is looking at the same. That is from the perspective of algebra. But exactly in the circuit, what is changing? Right? Ultimately, the threshold voltage is changing. What is changing in the circuit on the top so that the stream is not changing? 
PTS is getting that so essentially is PTS minus PTA. The overdrive is remaining constant. So I, again, I for the thirty on the top, I can still use the equation on the top. But the recognition should come that the overdrive is constant. Right? If you don't have the recognition and you use the same BTS, then your interpretation will be TM will change in both cases. That's what voltage changes. Okay. So there in the, the the differentiation is thought, right? You have to you have to uh, think appropriately. And the conclusion of these two, uh, I mean, the difference between these two circuits with regard to biasing and gaining TM is readily uh, evident, right? In the in the circuit on the top, any threshold voltage change doesn't lead to change in gain. But in the circuit on the bottom, threshold voltage change leads to change in gain. Right? So naturally, the circuit on the top is more, more robust to threshold voltage variation. And threshold voltage variation is, is, is a fact of life. It's going to happen because threshold voltage is often dependent on many ambient conditions. Your temperature changes, your mobility changes. Uh, sorry, your temperature changes, which means the concentration of Electron holes in the channel changes, moment the concentration of electron holes in the channel changes, your threshold voltage changes. So essentially, you cannot control threshold voltage. It's going to change. In fact, uh, in certain technologies, threshold voltage changes by plus minus 25 percent. Like over the, you, buy, you design your circuit for, let's say, threshold voltage of 500 millivolt across temperature from, let's say, minus 40 degree centigrade to 100 degree centigrade, the 500 millivolt threshold voltage can go from 250 to 750. Right, plus minus 50 percent, in fact, right? So, you have to, when, when you are faced with such type of processes, you obviously cannot design your circuit with a the topology in the bottom because your assumption of GM will simply not be valid, it's going to change uh, pretty clearly. Okay, okay, so now let's uh, understand the effect of yes. Exactly. Uh, 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 let me ask, uh, let me rephrase the question what you said. You said that we human beings, we have, we have a normal uh, temperature, right? 90 degrees centigrade or 90 Fahrenheit, okay. So 90 Fahrenheit or 90 Fahrenheit. And regardless of the ambient condition, we keep our temperature constant, right? What does the state that essentially tells you that there is an inherent feedback mechanism that is going on inside human beings? Right? You might also see that due to, I know, this is like an observation, during winter seasons we feel hungry more. Right? Why? Because we need more fuel to keep our temperatures constant. Right? So if uh, and, and so that keeps on happening. So similarly, there are circuit topologies which do this. Right, there are which there are certain topologies which which, in, which take in feedback to, to keep these things constant. We look at some of those topologies in, in the process we talk. So feedback for any stable system, feedback is the essential pattern, essential topology, essential architecture to keep things constant. Without feedback, nothing is going to work. Right. So it will come, it will come in the of that, but very uh, okay. So so in in this context, you can assume that the circuit on the top has a feedback. Right? Because how was it wired? Because why is the observing the brain voltage? And if there is a difference between what we want and what we are getting, we take the difference and take it, measure the difference and take it active value. Right? Feedback is that. Right? If temperature increases, we are doing something to correct it. So essentially, that's what uh, the circuit on the top is telling us. It says the temperature change, certain voltage change. Let the center voltage increase. The feedback essentially is we are observing I naught with idea, difference of that. If there is a difference in the brain voltage is trying to increase, that correspondingly is changing the BTS and is adjusting the BTS. Keep the current on. So that's what inherent feedback is already present in the circuit on the top. Okay. Uh, so now uh, the other point that I wanted to make is. So, the circuit on the top is robust to set of voltage variation. Good. What about uh, variation with regard to mobility? The circuit on the top has a, uh, has a dependence of mobility which is under root 2 meters. But the circuit on the bottom has a TM dependence on which is directly proportional to So, naturally, you see that it, the circuit on the top has a the constant current bias has a better, is slightly more robust to TM. 
mobility variation that the constant voltage that is biased, right? It's not the, the mobility variation is not like it's almost gone totally. Still there, but it is better. Okay. So the very simple circuits which give you what you want in, in, uh, in, in, in with regards to say uh, low oscillation with respect to the antenna resistance. Now, having said that, I, I coming back to this point, there are topologies which make the DM constant regardless of any change, right? So they will, I mean, unfortunately, this course is not broad enough to cover those. But if you are interested, if I, I can provide you some material, you can look, look it up. Uh, there are topologies where, in, in certain cases, where any Let's say one percent change in PM is also not acceptable. Point one percent change in PM is also not acceptable. So in those cases, those topologies are used, which where you essentially send something and then feed back something to ensure that you Okay. So so the key thing in all those all those topologies is to understand what you are trying to keep constant. You get that information out, check it with something, measure it with respect to something, measure the difference, and then check by the value. All feedback circuits are like those. We will we'll get into more uh, more formal way of dealing with feedback and few lectures from now. Okay. Okay. Uh, so so now let's go back to uh, uh, designing few more circuits. With uh, so before we move to the next part of the lecture, so let me uh, let me quickly test your understanding with regards to control sources. So, so there are, in general, four types of control sources we are aware of, right? Voltage control, current source, voltage control, voltage source, current control, current source, and current control, voltage source, right? So let's write those down. Okay. So, uh, so now let's say I have a black box. I have an input, I have an output. This is a control source. And I have, I mean, I have some input and I have some output. So, so the input is a voltage source with some resistance and output is a recording. So how do I know? What test would I do to figure out the control source that I am, I am about to plug in between the input and the output? It's one of those four. So given that it has to be one of those four, but how, what test will I do to figure out which one of these is this control source? So let's see. Look at the easier one. Let's look at the output side. Right? The output side means I am looking at these terms. Is it a voltage source? Is it a current source? Right? Control point is input side. In control point is output side. Right? So, so how would I know whether it is a voltage source or a current source? What should I look for? If there is a voltage source, if nothing is connected, what will happen? Yeah, so you get some output and application of RL will make that output. It is an ideal voltage source. <coughs> no, right? An ideal voltage source holds the voltage, whatever it is supposed to be, regardless of whatever you connect to. Right? So even if I connect RL or don't connect RL, the voltage that will accrue across these terminals should not change. Right, so essentially, I keep on changing RL. Even if this RL is variable, even if this RL is variable, the voltage across the output terminal should not change. Right, which essentially means that there should not be loading at all. Right, RL is giving you loading. Loading means it's drawing current. Right, so it depends. If the RL is very small, you are drawing a lot of current. If the RL is infinite, you are not drawing any current. Regardless of the amount of current that you are drawing. 
there should not be any change in the output voltage, right? Understood. But with regards to the inside the system, can you extrapolate that transition? So, what about the output impedance of this control source? Can I comment on the output impedance of the control source with regards to whether it could be a voltage source or current source? If the output impedance is very high, it's a voltage. Why do you say that? If the output voltage is impedance is very high, then there will be a voltage division, isn't it? So, so if I use a make it a uh, seven is equivalent, let's say. So there will be uh, some seven in voltage. And there will be some output impedance. So this will be the, uh, this will be the uh, model. So now if I connect this RL here, so now dependent on RL, this, uh, your output voltage is going to change a lot. Okay. If ROC is very high, so then what is if it has to be a voltage source, then yeah, our output uh, ideally ROC should be zero, right? An ideal voltage source has zero impedance, isn't it? An ideal voltage source has zero series resistance. So essentially, because why is it so? If there is a resistance, then you connect a RL, then the drop across that internal resistance will cause a drop and output voltage, right? So essentially, in a, in a voltage source, you want zero output resistance. Zero is not possible. We want the ROC to be much lesser than R, right? So essentially, voltage source, whatever, which means that if you have a voltage source, or if you want this control source to behave like a voltage source, R out or ROC, which is this R out has to be much lesser than RL. Okay. And for current source, naturally the opposite it, opposite is true. R out has to be much greater than RL. Okay. Uh, questions on this? Okay. So, so the last part of those expressions are in here, right? In terms of understanding whether it's a uh, voltage source or a current source. What about the first two? Is it a voltage control source or a current control source? How do I figure that? With respect to impedance. <coughs> we can change here and then see there is a change in current. And if there is a change in current, it's a then it will be a voltage control source, right? If I change it, change here and there is a change in current. Then it will be a voltage control. Okay, so again, that is a rudimentary definition. But if I want to get close and try to figure out with regards to there is an input impedance, is there a relationship between R2 and R2 that needs to be satisfied to ensure that it's a voltage control source? Ideally, what you want R2 to be is to want this control source to be a voltage control source. That's infinite and zero are the two possible scenarios. Yeah, so R E should be fine so that the entire V R appears <laughs> across R E, right? So, so if I connect here, if R E is infinite, the entire V R appears across the input port of the control, right? So if it is supposed to be, I don't know what it is. If it is supposed to be a voltage voltage controlled source. Then your R should be infinity or should be much larger than R. Do you agree? Okay. So if so for voltage control, R in should be much greater than RS. So naturally for current control, R in should be much lesser than RS. Okay, so so what is the intuition behind why should R D be much lesser than R D for current control source? When I say current control, you see it should be dependent on whatever current is coming from the source, it should be dependent on that. So what is the maximum current that the source can give if R D is 
if I move people, that is a case where the source can give the maximum amount of current. Right? Just like if there's a voltage flow, voltage control source, you wanted the maximum voltage to appear across the input port. But in current control case, you would like to have the maximum current to go into the input port. So, how will the maximum current go into? If I is zero. If I is zero, then the maximum current will be VI over RS. Right? And then something happens inside the control system. Whatever happens will be data, but that is the core relationship we should be clear about. Okay, so if, the, if, we, if we want to do current control, we would like to have maximum amount of current going. If we want to do the voltage control, we would want to have maximum amount of voltage to appear across the input port, right? Similarly, if we want to be a voltage source, the output size impedance has to be zero or much lesser than RF. If we want it to be a current source, then the output input is much larger than much larger than RF. Because again, in a current source, we want all the current to flow into RL and not into not into its own impedance. Right? R out is its own impedance. We want maximum current to flow it, flow into RL. Okay. Okay. So sometimes you will see that uh, without even the reasons behind it, uh, sometimes uh, control sources are often, if, if it's a current source, it is often modeled as a northern city valence. And if it is a voltage source, it is often modeled as a terrain city valence, right? But it's not necessary that you have to model it like that. It, it is easy to do an analysis if you model a terrain source with a northern city valence and a voltage source as a terrain city valence. But we should understand that both, both of them are interchangeable. Right? If we source transformation and not can become severance and severance can become not. Right? So just that you have to keep it in mind that one is easier to visualize, but it's not necessary that moment I say it's a current source, only not on city valence is valid. Okay. So that is that is up to your interpretation because it's not as if when I give you when it's not, it's the reason I'm saying that it's not as if 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 a circuit appears to be like this, let's say this is the RL. So I say this is I in, I in or it's I out. And this is ROC. Just because I have, or somebody has given you this topology, doesn't mean that it's supposed to behave like that. Right? Suppose we have the current source only when ROC is much larger than RL. Same construction can behave like a voltage source if the other if the other condition is here, right? If RL is if ROC is much lesser than RL, then it will sorry, if ROC is much larger than RL, then it's a current source, and if ROC is much lesser than RL, then it will behave like a voltage. Right? Okay, so again, what is the intuition? The intuition is. If ROC is much lesser than RL, then all the current will try to flow into its own internal impedance. Correct? So this voltage will be become then I out times ROC regardless of the value of RL. Correct? If, R if ROC is much lesser than RL, If ROC is uh, much lesser than RL, all the I out will try to flow into ROC and it will create a voltage I out times ROC is independent of RL. So that essentially is the voltage, right? So again, sometimes we get fooled into thinking that if, if, a, if, a, if a topology is drawn like this, it is meant to be a current source, not necessarily. It's meant to be whatever it is meant to be. Okay. So now that we have, we understand this, now that we understand this, it's get, get it's time to get into designing new sources, right? With, uh, with, with using our transistors. Now voltage control current source is simple, right? A transistor itself is a voltage control current source. We don't have to, uh, we don't have to spend much time on it, but let's say I want to do, I want to figure out how a voltage control voltage source should look like. Right. So let's say we want to have a voltage controlled voltage source. Okay. 
So how do I go about now? When I say we want voltage control, voltage source, or anything, we are talking in terms of incremental. Okay, so we, all in incremental domain. Once we satisfy the incremental domain, we'll put together a contraction to see whether uh, the total circuit will look like. Okay, so let's do this voltage control, voltage source analysis using a uh, uh, using the same intuition based approach that we have been we have been trying to do. Okay, so. Uh, so let's say we have a input voltage and we have a uh, we have a resistance and we need to put something in between this rs and rl to to uh, to ensure that it becomes a voltage control voltage source and let's assume that we are talking about a gain of 1 right we are talking about a gain of 1 so now the obvious question is what prevents us from connecting these two directly? Yeah, right. So output voltage depends on both RL and RS. Right? In a voltage control voltage source, it should not depend either on RS or on RL. So simply connecting, even if I want a gain of one, is not is not going to work. So to put something, we have to put something in between. Okay. So now let's uh, let's approach it from the again from the point of view of of negative feedback. Right? So so what so whatever we should put here, which whatever we should put here in between, should be such that if this voltage changes, this voltage should also change, right? And it should be in the same direction. Okay. So so now. So let's say, uh, let's say, since we are we are interested in figuring out, uh, big, uh, since uh, it, with respect to design, we are essentially trying. To, what are you trying to do in our thought process? We are trying to minimize the difference between the change of the input and the output. And if that difference between the change in input and output is zero, then we are done. Correct. So essentially, okay, so let me write out the uh, thought process. The thought is, so this is V naught, this is, let's say, uh, control terminal, right? So let me call it V in here. So what are we trying to do? We are trying to, uh, we are observe, observing V naught and trying to, minimize the difference between V in and V not. Right? So if we if we follow, I mean this is what we do in the lab also, right? If I tell you that put something in between and get me a contractor where V not is equal to V in, what are you going to do? You are going to put change, put something there and you are going to change V, v in and see V not follows. So in a mental model, you are trying to trying to minimize the difference between V in and V not. Right? So that's what we are going to do in, the, in this case also. But we have to do it electronically. Okay. So, so essentially what we are trying to do, we are trying to, we are first defining an error. Let's say define an error V e and say that error is V in minus V not. So we are trying to, we are trying to ensure V tends to zero, right? If we try to ensure V tends to zero and we succeed in that endeavor, then we would have what we want. Okay. Okay, fine. So, if we if we have to do this, which essentially means that using transistors, by the way, not like uh, sitting in the lab and turning knobs. So then uh, the logic is, so let's say I have V not here, V in here. Here, the observation terminal is V not because that's what we are trying to measure. Okay, so RL is connected. So let's say I, uh, let's say for some reason I, I put something there and and 
the observation is if RL, if B0 increases, if B0 increases, what should, what should happen to the error voltage? If V0 increases, the error voltage is decreasing, right? What should the corrective action be? The corrective action should be to, to ensure that. So see, I mean, okay. So think in, in this way. Uh, let me not confuse you. So think in these terms, right? So if so, let's say I have B in, I have B not. We are trying to develop a framework where we where we measure the. Firstly, if we have to take an action based on error, we should have a way of measuring the error, right? So essentially, we need to have a framework where we can measure the difference between V in and V not. Correct? So if we have this framework of measuring V in minus V not, or get something which is proportional to V in minus V not, then, then we can take some action based on that difference, right? If we don't have that difference generator, we cannot take any action, correct? So in an incremental model of a transistor, do you know any way of getting that difference? What about a GM? What does a GM do? GM is UNC of WIL times EG minus VS minus the right? So, so the GM, or in other words, the the incremental model of a transistor so this current is gm times vg minus vs in the incremental domain right so looks like the transistor itself is a difference generator not only difference generator is providing us current which is proportional to the difference right so that is exactly what we want in our case. In our case, we want to measure the difference and then take a corrective action. Right? Question? Okay. So if we want to do this, then looks like a transistor is a, is a decent choice. Right? But how do I connect up the transistor in this case? So, so I, we need to use a transistor. That much we understand. So let's say I put a transistor here. And I need to generate a VE, which is V in minus V naught. Now, note that v, the error voltage can be V naught minus V in or V in minus V naught. Doesn't matter because ultimately I want to put it to zero. So, so now the question is how do I connect it up? Right? How do I connect it up so that I know that this is GM VG minus VS? Now, what should be VG? What should be VS? So that we get our voltage control voltage source at. What do you think uh, should be the strategy? VG should be VA and VS should be V0. I mean, that's how I have anyways written, right? So, so let's look at it first and then see whether it makes sense or not, right? So, which means that at least this should be the drain. This should, I mean, this is VG, this should be V in, this is VS, which should be V naught. Okay. So this will be GM V in minus V naught. So now let's understand whether it does the job of our feedback correction or not. So let's assume that for some reason I change the RL, right? I change the RL and V naught increase. Right? V I haven't changed. V not increase. If V not increase by virtue of the action of voltage control voltage source, what should the output do? Should the output change or output shouldn't change? Not particular with regard to this configuration. In a voltage control voltage source, if I change RL, should the output change? No. So in this case, let's say I change RL, but this configuration seems like if I change RL, if I reduce RL for example, then I am essentially trying to pull out more current. 
So, if a voltage control, if if this guy behaves like a voltage control source, or if it is increasing feedback, any change in the in in the uh, any change in in the loop or any change in the component values, right? Uh, not internal component values, but any change in R L or any increase in T naught could be compensated by the action loop action, right? So, if V naught increases. If V naught increases, what's going to happen? V in is same. If V naught increases, this V naught is going to increase. If this V naught is going to increase, the amount of current that is getting pushed into V naught is reducing, right? So if the amount of current that is getting pushed into is reducing, then naturally the increment is getting opposed in the other direction, right? Another way of saying is that if the, if, if the amount of current that in pushed in is getting re is reduced, which essentially means that the amount of current essentially is getting pulled out. An incremental current is getting pulled out. Reduction of current in a certain direction is mean means increment in other direction. Right? It's a negative. So, which essentially means that if the voltage V naught is, is increasing, effectively I am the uh, feedback, the loop action is trying to pull out some current, thereby negating the impact, the negating the Increasing V naught, right? Similarly, if V naught is trying to decrease, the control source is sensing the difference between the V in and V naught, and then getting the message that I mean V naught is decreasing, sending more current. It is sending in more current automatically, and you try to we try to compensate, right? Okay. So if we understand this, if we understand this, and okay, so now. Again, what, what should happen to the drain side? Because it looks like uh, whatever the argument that we have given, the drain has no impact. We have only talked about the gate and the source voltage. Right? So if the drain has no impact, I can as well implement any ground level. There is, there is, uh, there is uh, nothing that we need to bother about. OK. So, so now this is with regards to this is with regards to uh, coming up with the circuit. But again, we don't know whether this is going to work under all possible scenarios or not. So we have to evaluate whether this is going to work under all possible scenarios. So, what is the first thing that we need to figure out? If it's a voltage control voltage source, what about the control terminal? What about the impedance of the control terminal? Right. So, if I have, let me sketch it separately. So this is V I, it has R S, it goes to the gate. So what is the impedance here? What is the input impedance? Again, this is the, this is the, box. So let me sketch and draw the source out also. So let's see. No, no, no. Why should it be one by the I'm saying this. What is Rn? So so R in is infinite. And this is by the way GM, this is VG minus VS. Okay. So RL is connected here. So we have so so infinite is a good, right? I mean, as close to 
ideal as we can get, even though in real transistors it's not infinite, but you don't have to bother about that. Uh, what about the output impedance? This I would request you to calculate and tell me. So output impedance, how, what will you do? You will essentially use the same old, same old. So VI, you short. So you apply a test voltage here. And you find out the test current. This current is GM times this voltage, which is zero. This is VG, which is zero, minus VS, which is V test. So I test essentially becomes GM times V test in the direction as in the opposite to the one that is shown. So essentially your ROC becomes one over GM, right? So if, what is the condition for a uh, contraption to behave like a voltage source? If ROC or in this case R out, right? I have said R out, if R out, is much less than RL, then it's a voltage source, which essentially means that you have to design your GM in such a way that one over GM is much greater, less than R. So this is a design requirement. Right? So if you want this contraction to behave like a voltage channel voltage source, input side you don't have to bother. Because so infinity is taken care, but on the output side, you have to ensure that the value of the GM that you design for is much lesser than R. Okay, so that becomes a design and job. <laughs> so, in, in tomorrow's class, we'll see how, how to go about this. By the way, this plugin, I mean, you should be very familiar with. I even though I wasn't really putting uh, put the contraction of biasing and all, I request you to give it a shot yourself. You will see you start right there. This is something you already see multiple times.